Hi, I'm Ko, and today we're decorating bathrooms. This is part of a series of a lake house build and design. We have one big project that we've been working on and that is a lake house. Now remember, I'm not a decorator. I'm not a designer. I'm not even close. I'm just a girl standing next to a room saying, can't this space be awesome? So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna look at our spaces and see what we can do to make them awesome. We're gonna follow my eight simple steps to decorating a room. Step one, what is the purpose of the room? Now with bathrooms, we all know what they're going to be used for, but who are they going to be used by? Guests, children, older people, you. Knowing who uses those rooms is gonna make a difference in how you set them up. Step two, what is the overall look of the room that you want? For bathrooms in this particular house, being a small house, I wanted everything to be simple. But I still went to my tried and true Pinterest boards and magazines and went through all of them to see what ideas were out there, maybe something that I hadn't thought of, and started pulling together those items that I thought would create a look that I liked. Remember, what's important is what do you want? How do you want your room to look? It's all about you and what you want. Step number three, choose your fabrics. In a bathroom, there are more fabrics than you might think. You have towels, you have rugs, you have shower curtains, and sometimes you have a window in the room that also needs a curtain. So think about all of that and how you want all of those elements to work together. In one of the bathrooms, I decided, in keeping with our boat theme in the house, to use a Kraken. I thought it would be kind of cheeky to put it in there, maybe not too serious. I didn't want to take everything to a certain designer level. I kind of wanted to have some fun. So I chose basically a black and white style curtain that would work with the paint in that room. In another guest bathroom, I decided to use a heron on a shower curtain. I found it on Overstock slash Bed Bath & Beyond and it actually was quite beautiful. I was afraid it might look kind of cheap, but since there are so many herons around the lake, I thought it'd be nice to sort of be referential to some of the wildlife in the area. Another option, you can actually take a curtain that is made for a window, buy one that's extra long and take that height all the way up to the ceiling. It's a wonderful way to cover tile that you may not like and cover maybe an insert or an older bathroom that maybe doesn't look so great. And remember, you may have another window in the room that needs another curtain, make sure these don't fight. Sometimes it's a good idea to have them match, but sometimes it's a good idea to have maybe a check on one, maybe a floral on the other that uses all the same colors, or use a solid on your shower curtain and something with a small pattern on the window, but make sure they don't fight each other. And in a small space, like most bathrooms are, having a lot of heavy fabric and a lot of pattern could be very overwhelming to the space. So think about that when you're working on these fabrics. Step number four, choosing the hard surfaces in the room. You have tile, you have flooring, you have sinks. You have a lot of items that you need to choose that are considered hard surfaces or permanent surfaces for the room. In one bathroom, we had a tub. It was white porcelain. So I decided to do a white tile with it so that they wouldn't fight. It has a little bit of a marble in it, sort of a grayish black marble running through it. But for the most part, I wanted something with a white background so that it would blend in with the porcelain in the tub. I chose a tile that would go well with this tub. I'm a little bit weird about tile with tubs. I like to have some white in the tile if I'm putting it with a white tub. A lot of people don't do that. It's really just a personal preference, but I wanted to have some continuity in here. In another guest bath, I chose a concrete look tile. It was a large format tile, which I do prefer because the grout lines are further apart and it looks a little bit less busy. But I used a pretty large format tile to go in the shower and go on the walls. And it looked great with the paint that I chose. And it looked good with the concrete that I used on top of the counters in the kitchen. I wanted everything to kind of go together and not introduce too many different elements for the house. As you know, I'm trying to keep this kind of simple and streamlined. Something to consider, pedestal sinks. There are so many different types of pedestal sinks out there. Make sure that yours has a flat top and that there's enough space on it to put a glass, a toothbrush and toothpaste, some makeup, 
a hair dryer so that people can get ready right there at the sink. You really need to think about that because some of these pedestal sinks have a slope on them. If you put something on them, it rolls off and they're very inconvenient to use. Those types of sinks are really only good for a half bath where people are coming in, washing their hands and leaving. Make sure you think about what it's like to actually get ready in that room with all of the items that you've put in there. I chose pedestal sinks because I wanted to have the freedom to pull in whatever cabinetry or storage that I wanted to use in each particular bathroom. I wanted to have a little bit more freedom. I didn't want the box that goes underneath the sink. I was afraid it would take up too much space in my small rooms. And I also didn't want that look. I thought it was a little heavy and I didn't want it to be outdated. And we also used the same flooring that we've used throughout the house. And we did that in all of the bathrooms. Step number five, choosing your paint. Now I always say, wait until you've chosen hard surfaces and fabrics before you choose your paints. Your paints can be flexible and you can actually match those things to fabrics and tile which cannot be changed. I'm gonna tell you a little story about me and some tile back in the 90s. I lived in an older house and one of the bathrooms was very large really for an older house, had mint green tile in it, floor all the way up the walls. I was not in a position to remove that tile and replace it with something else. I had to work with it. So I took my handy little color deck and found the exact color of mint that the tile was. I painted the walls that color to sort of give this elongated look to the tile and to that color. And then what that did was allowed me to choose an accent color that was a little calmer, like a really deep milk chocolate beige color. And I actually found some fabric that I could use in there and unite the room. It wasn't the best solution. The best solution would have been to redo the bathroom, but sometimes we just can't do that. So I felt like this was a pretty good second choice. I was really happy with it, but had I not had my color deck, I probably would not have been able to match that paint. There's no way. So make sure that you find a paint that works exactly with what you have in that bathroom. And if you have to get a custom color, get it. Now in this lake house, I only used two colors for my guest baths. One was the color I've been using throughout the house that matches everything. But the other, I decided to take a little walk on the wild side and I painted the walls black, the exact same color that I had on the exterior. I thought, well, that's a little referential. You walk in the door and as soon as you look to your left, you see the exact same color of the house right in front of you. And I thought it would be kind of exciting, a little different from the beige I've been using all over the house. We have the guest bath. We talked earlier that we were going to use the exterior color in this room. That's what we did. You'll notice in every room that I do not have white ceilings. I carry my paint color all the way around. I like that because it doesn't chop the room up. It makes me feel like it's bigger. And if I like the color enough to put it on the walls, then I want it everywhere. So that's what I did. I also wanted a dark color in here because of all the white porcelain in here. Did it close the room in? No, it didn't. It was actually pretty fantastic. I love the way it looks. And with all of the white tile in there and the porcelain sinks and the white plates that I put on the wall that have ships on them and the white shower curtain, everything is balanced very properly and it looks really good. It's actually one of my favorite rooms in the house. Another bathroom with a concrete tile, it matches perfectly with the wall color that I've been using throughout the house. That was not a mistake. In the very beginning, I made sure I had all of my tiles picked out my countertop picked out, and then I went to my paint. I took the countertops, the tile, little pieces of all of it, and my fabric, and said, okay, what paint color is gonna tie all of this in? So I did that at the very, very beginning of the entire house process. So there's a lot of thinking, planning, and figuring you gotta do when you start working on this. Make sure you put the time into that. Things will fall into place so beautifully if you put that time in beforehand. Step number six, choose your wood tones. In a bath, you really don't have to do that unless you're looking at putting a hardwood on the floor, but that really shouldn't matter too much. Most bathrooms don't have a lot of hardwood space, but choose the one you like. At this point, 
there's not a lot else going on in the bathroom, choose something you really like. If you are fortunate enough to have a larger bathroom that can have furniture in it, then make sure that all of it goes well and it complements the tiles that you've chosen and complements the style of the sinks or the shower, anything you've got that you're doing a little bit of style with, make sure that the furniture tones complement that style. Step seven, are there any existing pieces you need to work with? Sometimes you might be bringing a shower curtain from another house if you're redoing something, or you may have some old pieces like I do that you wanna pull in. I did use my existing piece that was used in the kitchen in my old house, and I pulled it into the master bathroom to use for storage, toiletries, towels, medicines, things like that, where I could keep it closed. You wouldn't see all of that busyness, but it just kind of blended in with the wall. You may be pulling in an end table or a bench, something like that, but sort of make a mental note of all the things you're going to be using in that bathroom and make sure that the size and the scale is appropriate. Another item that I used that was existing was artwork. And when I say artwork, I'm using that terminology very lightly. I bought a lot of very inexpensive sailboat paintings at garage sales and antique stores, and a lot of them were $10, $15 a piece, and just did little arrangements around the walls. And I also used plates. I used some ship plates in one of the bathrooms and just hung those one over the other up and down the wall. You can use things like that that are really inexpensive that will just make a statement. If you're not going to use a lot of fabric like I did not use, Make sure you have something in there that does make a statement. For me, it was the artwork. Step number eight, choosing your fixtures. Could be lighting fixtures, plumbing fixtures, but just make sure that you're being very thoughtful about what goes in there. And if you're like me on your budget, make sure you choose something that's going to stand the test of time. Pewter was in for a while, polished nickel, oil rub bronze, I think it was, that was in for a while, then brass is in for a while. All of these things are fantastic. And if you have the budget to change these out when they go in and out of style, more power to you. I don't, so I usually go with black because that iron look is kind of timeless. And it also, for me, went with the black trim around all of my windows in the house. So I stuck with the black. I chose black plumbing fixtures, and then I chose black light fixtures to go in the rooms as well. I also chose mirrors to go over each one of the pedestal sinks in each one of the bathrooms. They all had a black trim, very, very simple, not a lot of framing, but I did choose a round for one room, an oval for another, and a rectangular for another, just to have a little bit of difference between these bathrooms because I used a lot of the same materials in each one of the bathrooms. If you are looking at wood tones, you could actually choose a gorgeous wood toned mirror to go in your bathroom, especially in a half bath. That would look fantastic. So think about how you want that mirror to go with your furniture and with the style that you're choosing for your sinks, for your plumbing fixtures, and for the fabrics that you're putting in there. Okay, you finished your room. The guests are getting ready to come over. You're walking around, taking a little look, and you're going, hmm, what have I missed? Here are some things that you can consider so that when you make that little walk, you won't think you've missed anything. Hooks, lots of hooks, right next to the shower, on the backs of the doors, maybe even over the sink. People have extra towels, robes, some clothes that they're bringing into that room that they need to use and don't want laying on the floor. And if it's a small room, they will not have room to put it anywhere else. So make sure you have plenty of hooks. Make sure you have a place for people to put a bag, maybe a small bench, a stool. If you're lucky enough to have a larger bathroom, maybe a piece of furniture that they can place the bag on. Think about putting a very small stool that will slide under the pedestal sink so that someone can sit in front of that sink and do their hair or do their makeup. In another room, I used rolling carts. Those are so inexpensive. You can get those at TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Target. Just roll them in there, put them against the wall. A lot of them are sort of a wire look. I got mine in black. And just put some extra shampoos, a couple of washcloths, some toilet paper, soaps, things like that, that people can get to quickly and easily without coming and bothering you. 
Something I haven't even talked about is wallpaper. Bathrooms are a great place to put wallpaper. It's a wonderful place to express your personality, do something a little different, take a little bit of a risk because the room is so small, you don't feel like you're committing to something, especially in a half bath. Half baths are a great way to use wallpaper, maybe use some fun light fixtures and not feel like you're gonna have it destroyed with humidity, where it will start peeling. Also, a half bath is a great place to use nice pieces of artwork. You could actually put some in there and not worry about them being destroyed with the shower humidity as well. But you can do something really fun and take a chance. Oh, are we using the chipper now? I think he done turned on the chipper. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna finish this in sign language because he's using the chipper and I can't finish this. So I'm doing my best to get through this video, but we have the tree surface right outside the window. So y'all just talk amongst yourselves. Y'all okay? Y'all be doing okay? I'm doing great. Okay, we finished the bathrooms, but we have a lot left to do, so watch this.